Hello, welcome to Phil Beckwith, professional painter and decorator YouTube channel. Living HQ in Nottingham has been supplying the Beckwith decorators for about 10 years with all their fur and ball paint. So today, Phil, magic man, will be talking about fur and ball paint right from Living HQ. He will tell you a little bit about fur and ball, why you should be using it, what to use, where to use. So, without further ado, over to you Phil. Yes, Phil Beckwith, professional painter and decorator, back with a, an interesting riveting video on fire and ball paint. You know the paint that we all laugh about? Well, I don't laugh about it because if every customer of mine wanted fire and ball, I've got no problem with using fire and ball. I know a lot of painters and decorators don't want to use fire and ball. I know a lot of painters and decorators say that they'll get it mixed up in another brand. Ah, oh, shame on you. You shouldn't be doing that because there's actually nothing wrong with fire and ball if you know the process and know the right paint to use where. So today, we're going to do a whistle stop tour of Ivana's shop over in uh, West Bridgeford in Nottingham, who's my main supplier for fur and ball paints. Um, obviously, she's introduced me. We know all about the history of Phil Beckwith and Beckwith decorators and um, the Living HQ shop. But no, we're here today. I want to do quick revise on what paints should be using where because people get a bit confused about what paints they need to use on what surfaces. Now, I'm going to keep it really quite simple to you if you've got ceilings if you've got walls if you've got woodwork and we'll call it trim because i think some of my subscribers are over in america they don't call woodwork woodwork like we do in the uk they call it trim to me trims on a car that's by the by so anyway let's start with ceilings phil beckwith what do we put on ceilings if we're using fire and wall paint well we've got an abundance of tins of paint here and it's quite confusing for anybody to look at tins of paint and know which ones to use now my bit of a criticism with fire and ball is that the labels all look exactly the same even though they're different paints now if fire and ball's watching please can you change the color of the label so we know what paint we've got because there's an estate emulsion there's a modern emulsion there's an estate eggshell there's an a uh, there's a modern eggshell all the label colors are exactly the same so today I'm going to tell you which you need to be using where. So, da, da, da. right, back to ceilings. Let's start at the top and work down. You've got a ceiling. What paint do you need on a ceiling? I'm recommending to you to use a state emulsion. Phil, why are we using a state emulsion on the ceiling? Right, it's a flat finish. It doesn't show any brush marks. It doesn't show any roller marks. It's a chalky finish. It's a flat finish. So if you stand looking towards the window, across the ceiling, you shouldn't be seeing any brush marks, you shouldn't be seeing any roller marks. So that's why we use a flat finish on the walls so we don't get any critical light going across it to show up any imperfections on the wall. Use a flat paint. Right, if we're going to a high traffic area, we're gonna be looking at these. We're gonna be looking at these paints here that says modern, modern emulsion. And you're going to say, what's well, modern emulsion? Well, modern emulsion as a slight sheen to it it's not a vinyl silk it's not a soft sheen it's got a seven percent sheen um, content that gives you a hard wearing finish for high traffic areas and you're going to say phil what's a high traffic area places like your staircases going up your staircase wall um, your living room areas anywhere that the dog could be um, wagging its tail against utility rooms kitchens bathrooms use the modern emulsion got that ceilings flat finish estate emulsion walls modern emulsion slight sheen obviously you can go go totally away from what i'm saying you can use estate emulsion on walls but don't moan to me and put comments about how it's chalky you brush up against it with your coat and your bags and it marks because i'm telling you you should be listening to phil modern emulsions the one you need <laughs> Right, we've done ceiling, we've done the walls, high traffic areas, bathrooms, kitchens, modern emulsion, ceilings, estate emulsion. We've got to go over it so you don't forget. Right, we're going to the trim, woodwork. What do you use on that? Well, depending whether you want a sheen or not, if you want a sheen, go for the modern eggshell. That used to be Farrow and Ball's floor paint. It was that hard and that tough. It was a, it was a good move over to call that floor paint modern eggshell. It's a rock hard finish. 
put that on if you want a hard finish with a slight sheen if you want a flatter finish a drier looking flat eggshell you go for guess what it starts with an e well they all start with an e it's a state estate eggshell that's your flatter drier finish it's got a quality look about it if you want something flatter if you've got woodwork that's a little bit um oh looks damaged bit uneven it's had gloss on before shows all the imperfections go for a flatter finish so that's where you want to be using your estate eggshell are you with me are we following me yeah foreign ball also do some specialist finishes as well they've got the casey and distemper if you've got problematic walls that's got a bit of a damp casey and distemper is an ideal one i don't want to touch on that one now it's a little bit specialist from what you what the people are probably looking at this video wanting to know about today all we want to talk about is ceilings walls woodwork casey and distempers bit of a specialist if you want a bit more information on that please ask somebody like Yvonne at Living HQ in Nottingham um, or you can go onto the Farron Ball website and find out a bit more about that there. Now, I'm going to take a breath because I've been non-stop talking. Yvonne, can you hear me in the other side of the shop? I can, Phil. I Is can. there anything I've missed out about Farron Ball paints? Well, you actually not even mentioned the other two woodwork finishes. Um, you should have started probably with Dead Flat which is a beautiful chalky, signature chalky um, finish for fire and ball. Um, and actually it looks really beautiful on beam. So again, it's not ideal for um, high traffic areas or, or bathrooms, anywhere like that, or not probably, it looks beautiful on furniture, but ideally it would be somewhere where there aren't gonna be any hands touching. Um, so beams, for example, where you don't want any reflection whatsoever. Um, and then of course you've got your full gloss as well. So you know if uh, it actually looks really good if you if you choose like a quirky color for your front door for example um, and then use the full gloss finish really really beautiful and is it true on a far and ball are one of the highest contents of gloss when it comes to water-based paints for getting the gloss that you'd imagine if it was an oil-based finish that is exactly true uh, Phil um, far and ball have like mastered these finishes um, to say that these are all water-based finishes now, um, the the actual finish and uh, the how robust each finish actually is, is just remarkable. Yeah. Right, so thanks Yvonne on that, about the woodwork finishes. Um, the water-based gloss, now something Farron Ball um, picked up on was back in 2010 that they moved away from manufacture of oil-based paints onto water-based. So from 2010, Farron Ball went totally water-based, spent umpteen millions converting their factory down in Wimborne in, um, well, it's down near Dorset. Bournemouth, Dorset, sorry, Dorset, thank you, though. Dorset, Dorset, not the posh area posh area for posh paints um, yeah so the gloss very good it's high gloss content it's one of the best glosses for a water-based um, paint out on the market um, also we want to touch about uh, touch on far and ball do exterior um, paints as well with a six year up to six year guarantee on um, exterior eggshells and exterior glosses now these are all great but the biggest thing you've got to be aware of is it's no good having the finished paints if you haven't got the correct um, undercoats for them. So if you want the proper finish of gloss, eggshell, modern eggshell, make sure you use the correct undercoat to go with it. So if we're talking about outside exterior paints, Yvonne has got up on the toff shell, uh, toff, toff, well we've got toffs, yeah, toffies. Um, we've got exterior undercoats. Now they come in three sorts of colours you get. Um, across the board with the undercoats with Farron Ball, you've got a light tones, a mid tones, and a dark tones. Let's not forget the red tones, Phil. And you've also got red tones. So please, when you're looking at your finished paint colours, correspond that to the correct undercoat that you need. And sometimes it may it may say that you need a light tone, but if you actually look at the finished tone of your own finished paint, estate eggshell modern eggshell you might actually think it looks more suitable to a mid-tone that's not a problem to cross reference it that way so if it's a light tone mid-tone or dark tone make sure you get the right paint for the undercoats and if you do the process correctly which is obviously prime undercoat and two top finishes you'll have a, a cracking paint finish now i've said the word prime now if it's a bare surface bare wood don't forget you've got to prime that wood first now that gives you a decent surface to put your, under, your undercoat on so you go prime undercoat two top finishes 
most water-based paints now virtually across the board with all brands are actually two top coat finishes now what i would say to you if you're going over previously painted woodwork give it a good abrade give it a good sand down dust off sugar soap it down wash it down if needs be you can get away with just an undercoat and then two top coat finishes and that will sort you out and you should have years of happiness with that paint now have i covered everything ivana you certainly have although i just want to add in that Farron Ball has got the undercoat and primer in one so you're saving yourself a job you don't have to use a primer and then separately an undercoat it's a primer and undercoat in one. Oh, I missed that one off did I miss that off purposely mm, mm. maybe maybe so that is right so it's a, it's a self priming undercoat so yeah prime with it um, and use it for the undercoat it's all in one um, jobs are good and that's where people go wrong they're not putting enough coats on if it's bare it obviously soaks in the paint and that's where you can suddenly start looking at surfaces where it looks like you've missed a bit well you haven't missed a bit it's just that the wood or the surface that you're painting over has actually soaked in and that's why you get little areas that um, look like you need another coat over it so yeah prime undercoat and two top finishes jobs are good and I don't think I've got anything else to tell you apart from what's the main gripe that painters and decorators trade painters and decorators have got with Farron Ball it's the elephant in the room we don't get any discount on the paint so Farron Ball's watching please sort us out with trade account discounts because that is why painters and decorators professional painters and decorators cover your ears Ivana aren't using the paints yeah. but that's, shh, that's just a bit of a gripe but no so yeah let's wind up now we've covered the paint ceilings walls uh, woodwork trim press that subscribe button like give us the comments because if I've missed anything off or if there's any information that you want uh, please give us some comments below I think we're covering everything I love Farron Ball paint and as I've said at the beginning or in my previous um, intro if I could use Farron Ball paint on every job I would do the downside with Farron Ball paint 85 quid for a 5 litre tin of emulsion it's a lot of money but if your customer's willing to pay it don't knock it because it is cracking paint your house deserves it my house deserves it and it's all to do with the makeup of the paint and the titanium dioxide is the better quality um, binders pigments solvents all goes into a tin of paint titanium dioxide comes very expensive and that's why your farron ball paint is an expensive paint because they only use the best quality uh, materials that go into the paint when they're all mixing it up so titanium dioxide it's a cracking word for a weekend titanium dioxide sounds like something off transformers that the kids would be listening to oh that's titanium dioxide over there sounds oh. like something i put on my hair yeah, Ivana uses that on her hair, obviously. Can you see that? She's hiding behind this. Look at this thing here. This shop is ace. If you want to get a little trinkets there. It painted so, in Farron Ball. All painted in Farron Ball. So thank you very much for listening to me. And we're going to wind up now and over and out. See you on the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Just wanted to make one valid point, actually, that you are not limited to um, the... So with the finishes that Phil mentioned, so the eggshell, so you've got your dead flat. Uh, your estate eggshell, modern eggshell, and full gloss, you're not limited to only using them on the woodwork that Phil mentioned. So, you know, paint them on the walls, create a gloss wall, um, estate eggshell in the bathroom, shower room, um, it's going to be really protective. Um, yes, the sheen level will be a little bit different to your modern emulsion in your estate emulsion, um, but you are not limited to using them just on the woodwork. So, you've got a good selection of paints to use on so many different surfaces. So, Thank you very much Ivana. Uh, do you want to just mention about um, the paint um, colour cards because what's on a colour card is um, available. Absolutely. Yeah and there's also archive colours. Absolutely so this um, colour card will show 132 of the current range um, and also just another handy tip so on the back of the colour card there is a list of all the different finishes, the sizes available and a bit of advice where to use the paint um, but then of course we have got the other range such as the natural history museum so a further 16 colors very beautiful to work they look absolutely gorgeous outside as well quirky door colors for example and of course the recent launch with liberty so a further 16 colors available in more sample pots not forgetting the range of archive colors from the day I mean there's so many to work with uh, there's 
bound to be a colour for somebody in one of the ranges. So, audio colour chart, and we've got plenty going at Living HQ. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Oh, for now. Bye-bye. So yeah. Okay. I did, I did, I did.